Yes, yeah, the, 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 you were saying something about you know waking up early at about twelve a.m. and and then. Uh, yeah, yeah, because usually as, as in twelve a.m. everybody's asleep. Yeah, uh, you know, it's literally like bodies at rest. But then there's this uh, quietness that yeah. you can you can get any anywhere. Yeah, and you know, there's no car is, is going around, especially uh, even even major cities. Everything is a bit quiet, so mm-hmm. that you are in tune with almost your soul. Yeah, and then sometimes it's the best time to also commune with God because all it the is. noise is quiet down. So it's a it's a good time, it's a perfect time. That's why you pray, you meditate. That's right. And also, and interestingly, sometimes when you look at those that write, that's where they. That's yeah, the time same day. with me, same with me as well. Same. I mean, yeah. I've been off since five, so I wake up by five. I used to do four in the morning, but as I got older, when I hit my 40s, uh, and I, I slowed down on that, so it's five. So <laughs> yeah. I, I put in my solid seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Okay. Um, and, then, and then our mothers, as in like, when I mean our mothers, like, you know, they usually wake up 5 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like yeah. that. So, yeah. Um, it was, they, they were effective in, in a very, way. Very, very, yeah. So we just have to learn what works yeah. and think, take that and then discard those things that don't work. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for coming for the pod. Hello, everybody. You know what's up? Um, I always say that my guests are amazing, but this guy is phenomenal. <laughs> I want to start first. I will tell you to tell us a little bit about your backstory, but I want to just create this context that you are a Niger guy. Yeah, doing, doing phenomenal things, and I I love your bio. You said proudly Ninja, like this is my dude. <laughs> yes, I am. So you went to Futa, mm-hmm. Federal mm-hmm. University of Technology in Akure. Yes. <laughs> so you're a Futa boy. <laughs> I I am interested. I am. You know why I'm saying this for me because someone will look at you and your successes. No, 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 no. He went to Futa. He said in Nigeria. Before he yep. went to England. He went to school. In England, then we moved to America. So mm-hmm. now our own be this. Now yeah. our own be this. So for me, the question I want to ask you is that how did your staying in Nigeria, growing up here, family member, how did that foster your drive? Because you're very driven. Very, very, it's clear. Did that help you or was it nature or nurture? This entrepreneur, because you are the you are the second of five children. Mm-hmm. Good, yeah. good. So yeah. So was it nature or nurture in terms of your entrepreneurship? Uh, it was not nature. <laughs> it was nurture. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah. It was nurture. You know. So um, I, you know, I grew up in uh, Malsun. <laughs> oh, say that again. <laughs> I grew up in Mao too. So Block 22, which is my company, is actually I actually grew up in Block 22, flat three. I'm all Jesus the Christ. Mouth. No, let me hold on, let me hold on. No, this is my podcast. It's always very fun. But for those of my listeners in America and in the UK, because there's a lot of them that listen to it, right? Mal 2 is not uh, Chelsea in the UK. <laughs> We're talking about Peckham around that area. <laughs> Uh-huh. So you need to understand where this guy is coming from. Mm-hmm. Please, please mm-hmm. proceed. Please proceed. Yeah. Yeah. So, just like you said, one day I was reading the newspaper and I saw uh, they wrote uh, Mal Two is slum of Lagos, and I'm like, what? <laughs> a slum of Lagos? You know. So back to my story. So I grew up in Block Twenty Two, flat three, and motor fans nested Mal Two, and um, it as in I. My, well, growing up, I used to think my dad was wealthy, and I think he was, but after a while, you know, um, he lost it. And then I did a study, even as young as I was, I looked at families across as in, across the estate. Mm. They were doing well until one child came, two child came, three child, as in, and then everything dwindled. So at that young age, I think I started studying a bit of trend. I was doing statistics, or I was, I was, I was doing research. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, what happened? So from that tender age, I my mind started working. Okay, what do I need to do differently? Mm. You know, I, I didn't have an answer. <laughs> I just knew that I just wanted to do something um, uh, different. So, you know, at a young age, I started reading also. I, love, I just love reading, as in, mm. but I was not reading the right stuff. I was reading Ints, Art. I'm, I don't know if you remember all those Ints, yes, Art. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> And I, I think after a while, I moved to uh, novels. So 
but I just add that it has to be different because at that, you know, I became what poor in that sense. Mm. <laughs> I could not really afford things and all that. So by the time I entered Futa, I met with some, some people and somehow, somehow we started, I started my drive of, I want something different. There was no help until I met a particular lady and I desired the kind of life, you know, she was like, they were living in, when Futa was, she speaks good, good English, living in a nice area and everything. So I started associating with them. And then that's why I was introduced into reading motivational books, you know? Wow. So I literally read myself, as I started reading, and reading, I was reading so much that she said, you know what, for every two John C. Maxwell book you, you read, read one spiritual book. Jesus Christ. So, so I, I started by reading John C. Maxwell book. And that's why I'm a big proponent of leadership because the first person that you lead is yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you can lead yourself, you have no right leading any other person. So I started with John C. Maxwell leadership books. And then before you know, I moved into uh, leader, uh, motivational books, leadership books, um, then uh, what do you call it now? Business books. Mm, mm, and mm. business books. So, and then because of my of the poverty, literally there was nothing coming from home. We formed a club, I remember then called Z- Zilonia's Club. They <laughs> 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 call it Zilonia's Club. And what, as in, one of the things we usually do is to come together, think of ideas that we can do and all that. So, but during my course of study, I started seeing and learning trends about worldly people. Most of the worldly people always engage in um, daily needs, daily, something that people need daily. Mm, that was what they were selling, right? Whether they were selling or they were involved in something daily, you know, Dangote meeting your daily needs, you know, uh, either they're in uh, real estate, you know, something, or their yeah, fashion, something that you would need daily. Yeah. They may be involved in something else later, iPhone and stuff like that. So I started praying for an idea. And then I started, I, <laughs> this is interesting. I started laundry and dry cleaning in Futa. How old were you at this point? Ah, I, would, I, I, would, I can't remember. In school, right? In school, yeah. I started entrepreneurship in, 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 on Futa campus. And, and so, and this is my thing. And I remember when I started, there's a particular lady, I can't forget her. She sat me down and told me for almost two hours why my idea would not work. As in two good hours, she covered all the bases. Like, mm. as in, and she told me how oh, it's not work. So she, when she finished, I didn't know what to say. As in like, I literally didn't know what to say. Mm. As in, because she, um, she covered all the bases students are poor, this is this, for two hours. Mm. I just wanted to start a business. And she just, as she finished me. So why she was, why she was talking, I just, I said, I, said, I just prayed. I said, Jesus, give me one of those, your answers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm serious. I like give, that. <laughs> give me one of those, your answers. And, and, and he gave me, and he gave me. So when she finished, I said, do you know that when you put on, you know, you're wearing the glasses, mm-hmm. that when you put on the glasses and the lens is red, everywhere looks red. That's she right. said, yes. Yeah. I said, if you wear a, a, a black colored one, everywhere looks black. She said, yes. And mm-hmm. if you wear a blue one, everyone looks blue. She said, yes. I said, remove your glasses. You know what I mean? Meaning you see through your own conventional lens. Yes. And not necessarily the way things are. Yes. Yeah. So reality is independent. So I said, because you are biased in your thinking, mm. that is what you see. You only see poor people. Because in the same campus, there were club boys driving cars. They were uh, wealthy students. They were lecturers. I said, you know, I, I chose what I saw. And then mm. you what you see. And number two was that, as in when I started, one of the also thinking is that campus is a controlled environment. Well, and I will tell you what I mean. If everybody needs water, if someone needs water, everybody needs water. You know, yeah. all we are saying, give us water. Yeah. As in, if everyone, if everyone, everybody is, if someone is broke, it's literally like everybody is broke. <laughs> <laughs> and everything. If, if there's strike, everybody has strike. You know that kind of thing. So I said, if you can succeed in business in a controlled environment, how do you want to succeed in an uncontrolled environment? Hey, Jesus, I don't stand. Jesus. 
Jesus. So, so for me, campus hmm. is the training ground. Hmm. And, and one of the things also is that if, if you don't succeed, I, I told my pastor then, which is the pastor, I, said, I said, if I don't succeed, as in, if, I, if you can't succeed in the control environment, then number two is, at least if you don't succeed, your friends will feed you. <laughs> and you, <go> to one <laughs> room, so, you, know, you can go from one room to one room. And in. that's true because you never <laughs> see a homeless student lying on the floor in a in university <laughs> campus, but you see them in a city. Yep. This yep. is dope, man. This is dope, man. Mm. Yeah. So, so with, with those things, and then I told my, so when I, I my pastor, I said, if you, if you guys don't patronize me, you guys will, will feed me. <laughs> you guys, mm. I said, I'm going to come and everything. So I remember, and, and before I, and then I, I started, and, and I'll, I'll tell you how I started. That's how I learned that you, know, you don't need money to start. This is, this is powerful. Um, so, I wanted to start after we came up with the idea. My pastor, the, um, she's a female. She was she was also there, and she was like, "Okay, start." Mm-hmm. I could not start. I was thinking, I need washing machine. I need you know, I need this. I need that to be able to start and all that. So one day, she she was with me. She was as we were talking. Well, I think we we're like three. So she said, mm-hmm. "Have you started?" I said, "No, that ah, I need washing machine and everything." She now said, "Can't you use your hand?" So I said, mm. ah, why would I use my hand? If I start using my hand now, people would think I don't have money. Mm. So she 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 looked at me and then she walked very close to me. In fact, literally as if she wanted to kiss me. Mm. And, and and she was shorter than me. So she mm. she stood on her to, on her on her toes. Mm. And you know what she did? Mm. She shouted at me, Do you have money? <laughs> <laughs> for a second that I was like, you know, I was, do I have money? And then, you know, it, it started with anger. And then, you know, you start from anger, they start from realization. <laughs> and then you're not, <laughs> off, you're not off yourself. <laughs> and then I just said, and I told myself, that's true. I don't have money. Is that not why I wanted to start business? Mm. Immediately I said that the Holy Spirit Said, some, said something to me. He said, the problem of this generation is that you guys are too proud, yet you are empty. Mm. So, so I, that experience for me was humbling and was also life-changing. So she left. I was, I was just sitting now. I don't know, like, I was just thinking, I said, God, what, what will I do? What will I do? As in, I was, where, I was sitting in my room and then I look. I looked to this side. You know, I, I felt it was like an expense. I looked to this side. I saw t- a table. Mm-hmm. I looked to this side. I saw my iron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I look, and then my bathroom was open, and then mm-hmm. I saw buckets. And then mm-hmm. God said, "What do you need?" I'm like, "Oh, that's true. That's what I need." And I stood up from the literally. I stood up. I came out of my out of my room. Mm-hmm. I was living in a like a three bedroom. We we're sharing um, yeah. the rooms. So right. I came out. I walked around the building to the other side of the building. I mm. knocked on my, uh, on, on the lady's Fellow door. neighbor's door, yeah. And I knocked and I said, and they opened, I said, hi, I've started my laundry and dry cleaning services. The person was like, oh, are you serious? I'm like, yes, I'm serious. They said, are you serious? Yes, so wait. Went inside, came out with 35 piece of clothing, 35. Mm. And said, how much for this? Mm. Uh, you know, of course, my mother did not give birth to a fool. I didn't yes. know the price. I said, yeah. well, you know, because we are starting, we have promotional yeah. price, so we're going yeah. to do it at 20, 20 naira per one. Yeah. So she said, okay, give me 500 naira, and I took the clothes. That's how Michael Walsh started. Jesus Christ. So I, so I took the 500, went to the market, but so, but uh, the li- uh, like the lion to package it. Yes. Because... One of the things was that growing up, I used to take my dad's uh, shirt to the to the dry cleaners. The laundry, yeah, yeah. I I I knew how they package. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So when I brought it, when when I finished, one of the things I've learned, and I learned this from Feladrotes, uh, Feladrotes, as he talks about, um, I can I can't remember exactly, but he said, make your packaging, make your packaging 
excellent or something like that. But yeah. when you do that, make it wow or something like before they yeah. before they won't say you make it excellent, but by the time yeah. you talk, they say wow. Yes. So, so I <laughs> I I I did it, uh packaged it. Then I, I I'm like, how do I seal this thing? Do you know what I did? I just I just thought like, iron is hot. I'm an engineer. Iron mm. is hot. Iron fast over the nylon. We'll yes. It. Yes. So I just I just did it. It was sealed. So I went back to deliver the clothes. As in, like two, was it the next day? Maybe the next day. And then I was holding the the you know folded yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. So when I knocked, the person opened the door and said, Ah, are you directly now you're a student? Mm. As in, I'm like, both. You're like, ah, how did you see? Where did you see? I thought you just said you just started. Mm. I, I washed my hands, you know, and everything. But that passed a message to me about great packaging enhances value. Mm. So, so like, I don't know you are a, I thought you were just a student. So she collected it and that's how, literally how I started. Wow. But the wow. most powerful thing for me was it started first with renewing my mind. Mind, you know? yeah. Yeah. I, I literally started reading, started reading, started changing our thinking, started as in like, okay, oh, how do we solve this problem of not having money? We formed a club, and from the club, we started <laughs> generating ideas, some rubbish, some, but eventually we we got ideas. Interestingly, a lot of us got ideas, and I was but I was the only one that took action. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Man. I was, come I, on. you know, I was the only one that took action. And and that's literally how I started my. Where are some of those people now? Where are some of them now? Well, uh, my pastor, she's in Lagos. She's working in an architectural firm. Boy, uh, is is in heaven, I believe, mm. right now. Um, one is in Texas. There's a lady in Texas. Lovely, and, lovely. Um, yeah. You just spread all, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Let me segue a little bit. Let me segue and, and ask this because it has been on my mind because I realized mm -hmm. that um, in researching you, but I was, I would ask that question. I will introduce that question with a quote by Peter Thiel, mm -hmm. one of the co-founders of uh, PayPal before they sold to eBay for a billion dollars. <clears throat> he said that selling your company to the media is, is a necessary part of selling to everyone else. He said, you should never assume that people will, ad will admire your company without a PR strategy. Even if your particular product doesn't need media exposure to mm. acquire customers, the press will help attract investors and employees. Now, mm. You use the you use PRO a lot from what I've studied. You know, I see uh, media houses interviewing you, and you live in America. I'm seeing Guardian interviewing you. I mean, but the real estate people that I know here in Nigeria, you know, the interpreters I know in Nigeria, they don't they don't walk the media like you walk the Nigerian media. So it's, uh, it's sort of interesting to me. So I want to ask a question: Has that helped you in your in your deal flows? Has that helped you in attracting talented people to work for you? Has that helped you in attracting opportunity? I want you to speak to media because it's something I'm telling a lot of my clients. They don't work the media. And there's an African proverb that says that until the lion can talk, every story will glorify the hunter. Can you speak yeah. to that, please? Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say, I would, let me start this way. So one of the things, you know, being an agent, like real estate agents, you know, one of the things when I, when I, especially when I'm teaching my uh, agent or I'm teaching, I'm speaking with my mentee and everything. I, one of the things I say is this: You are a real estate agent. Don't be a secret agent. Mm. Don't be a secret agent. Okay, I've been no vex. Talk him again. Talk him again. <laughs> I'm like, ah. you are a real estate agent. Don't be a secret agent. Mm, 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 mm. And 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 I'm giving an analogy. A lot of times, Nigerians, uh, especially Christians, <laughs> Nigerians, especially, Christians, we do something I call uh, winking in the dark. Hmm. If I'm in the room, like, okay, for instance, we are doing this podcast, and I, I'm both of us, not even both of us, I switch off my light, and I'm winking at you. Are you going to see what I'm doing? No. That's why a lot of people are doing They are winking in the dark. Hmm. No matter how 
good you are, no matter how good you are, and it, and and it goes it, it goes back into marketing, you mm-hmm. know, which is still part of PR and everything. And uh, let let me let me explain with this illustration. So I I I want came into a business with, with a particular guy. He was the one in, involved in the manufacturing, like the production of what we, the end product. So we were in charge of this, the uh, marketing, sales and marketing aspect. So, yeah. but he was too greedy. He, he started the business, he could not market, he was too shy. And we took it up. We took it up and like, you know what, me and my wife, are like, we can help you do this thing in order to encourage you to start. And by the time we started, if I tell you what it was, you, you will laugh. Because mm. when we started doing it, people said, ah, I think the agudas are broke. Mm. You know? But we didn't care. Because you know, we didn't care in the sense of like, I, I was dead. You know, since when I that woman said, you don't have money. Mm, mm, <laughs> I was mm, when my mm. ego died. Mm, so, mm, mm. so this guy knows how to cook. He can. A guy, he can cook, so he, he will make a song, a yamashe, in America. Mm. And then every Sunday, every Sunday, when we're after church, we we'll open our Range Rover and you'll see soup. Mm. Ah, Jesus, then, Jesus. <laughs> Femi, Femi, not, not go far. Mm. There are people that don't have Range Rover in Nigeria. Wait, they get this soup idea. Their pride will not allow them to do it. Yep, I agree. Let's continue. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, so we just open. I the guy was like, "Ah, oh, you can cook. Sell this thing. Sell this." We're like, "Ah, oh, I'm shy." And I say, "So my husband, you know what? Cook. We will sell." I said, "So we open the Range Rover and we will sell every as in Sunday. We we'll make like five hundred to six hundred, seven hundred. As in, on a good day, we we'll make a thousand dollars in profit. Wow, which was not bad. And so we're selling. So the guy became greedy and we're like, "Ah." Uh, he wants to, I mean, sorry, sorry, no, so, sorry, sorry. I will be cutting short a little bit. Yeah. How much is the dollar to the naira today? Let's say at seven hundred naira. Tell me that's seven hundred thousand naira. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I want to. I like perspective. That's seven hundred thousand naira. Please continue. Book hmm. remember, remember, because number one here, people are so people are busy. Then number two, a lot of people want to eat back food back as in like Nigerian food. Yeah. And it's yeah. like luxury sometimes yeah. here. Yeah. So this was an you know opportunity, need money. So the guy became greedy and started making some ridiculous amount. So he told me something, said that oh, he won this amount, that oh, his production is this. So I told him something. I said, no matter how good your stuff is, if you don't market and you don't have a customer you are dead yes yes sir. So he said it was like no so it became like i said it became greedy and all that so we, we pulled out and said do your stuff you know the, the business died it produced as in like the, the next sunday tried to nobody came to meet him no as in like he literally could not sell so going back to to uh the to pr your for your real estate business yeah PR, yeah PR mm. and everything so one of the things that I learned, I had one of the good thing that one of the greatest secrets that I have is a secret. <laughs> and I'm telling you, mm. is mentorship. Mm. So I went to meet one of my, as in my mentor, I got into a company and I had this mentor. And I was like, what? Now, what should, as in, I mean, Neil, what should I do? You know, he told me, he said, go and study the top three people in your field and repl- don't think, just replicate what you see them do. Hmm. But mind you, I, I'm, a, I'm a reader, sem- seminars, hmm. you know, I'm sure you were shocked that I was following you that you didn't know I was following you. As in, <laughs> as in, any, as in I was a reader, anybody that has something to, that, that's producing value or content, I'm, I'm following them, learning from them, and gleaning, gleaning from them. So I said, so I went there and I saw them. And I'm like, these guys are in the media. These guys are, you know, like they are in your face. They, in your face. <laughs> Instagram, they are big there and everything. And then by the time I distilled, they're like, I'm like, this guy, seriously, we're just talk guys. Mm. Telling intelligent people, this is a yeah, this is a bedroom. Come <laughs> on, like brother! That. Come on, brother! Reverse engineering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, we're just you know, sometimes we, we sometimes you need to break down what you do exactly. 
yep, 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 to yep. the simplest form so mm-hmm. that you can literally know, okay, what exactly is working? Mm-hmm. You know, because anybody can be a real estate agent. Anybody can, as in somebody, somebody that's why I heard them say, we're just tall guys telling intelligent people that this is a bedroom when they can see that it's a bedroom. <laughs> but my brother, being a tall guy, make uh, Ryan Sierra did billions of dollars just being a tall no, guy. No, I know. I'm just saying that you break it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Level where you can, okay. Because by the time you break it down, I understand that. Then you know, then you can add value to Come your on. sales chain mm. or to your product chain. Like, okay, mm. what exactly are people buying? Why are they mm. using me? Then you mm, know that it's, mm. it's more than being a tall guy. It's that trust. That's when I learned about real estate has to do with personal branding. Come on, brother. Come on, man. Come on, man. Personal branding. In terms of like, people don't buy from the company. They buy from you. From you? Hey! Oh, they buy from you. Uh, and like, for instance, if you ask me, what, as in, what, what, as, ask me, what, what do I do? You know, we call it real toy. Yeah. So what do I do? Most times people will say, like if you're in networking events and people ask, like people ask normal agent, what do you do? It's like, oh, I'm a realtor, and that ends, that ends the the conversation because everybody knows what a realtor, realtor do. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So, but if you ask me, number one, people find it hard to believe, but I'm I'm actually an introvert, so I came up with a lot of questions, like I came up with a lot of uh, terminologies or no, what would I call it now? I come up with a way where. If you ask me a question, you ask me another one again mm. and another one again mm. Mm. because mm. so that I can talk. Mm. Mm. So, mm. so when people ask me, what do you do? So I, this is what I answer. I help people achieve one of the biggest goals of their life. <laughs> That's intriguing because I'll go like, tell me more. Like, what do you mean by exactly, that? Exactly. Exactly. And then people ask because everybody wants to achieve the biggest goal of their life. Come on, yeah. man. Come on, man. What a hack. So what, what is that? So I, I, so I answer by, say, by saying, you know, one of the biggest purchases anybody will ever make in their lifetime is the house that they're living. So they're like, and you, you know, you, they not, everybody nods. Like, yeah, yeah. So, so, I say, so I help you achieve that process. They say, how? I said, I am a realtor. Wow. <laughs> because I, I get I get attention I get two affirmations come on man as in I get you know I get the, I get the attention I get the affirmation they they are literally you know it's like you give people have to give you permission to be able to sell to them that's right that's right that's right you know so I get the attention I get the affirmation they're like yeah one two and then you just subtly tell them what you do. So they don't feel you are selling at them. They feel you are solving a problem, a problem that some, sometimes they don't even know that they have. Mm. So back to, 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 to PR yeah. is, don't mind me, I'm all over the place. <laughs> back no, I love to, it. I, to, I love it. I love it. Yeah. To PR. Is that I, so? I learned that early. Don't wink in the dark. Don't wink at a girl in the dark. She's not gonna know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So I started like, and then again, no matter how good you are, if people don't know what you're doing, then as a when you're not Jesus, even Jesus did a lot of PR. How? As in, as in, so I started from Instagram. Started doing Instagram, you know. Started doing Instagram, started doing Instagram, and then after a while, I realized that. So, um, I think I, I maybe somebody approached me or something. But any opportunity for media, for you see, when you when you said, "Oh, the podcast," I'm like, yeah. Got number one, I already know your you. I already know your brand. You, you don't you don't know, but I see I see your work. I see wow. you in London. I see you in this. Like, thank you. Know, you. I I only follow probably. It's not less than a thousand people, you know, wow. on Instagram. That's, in, a pro- that's an honor. That's an honor for me. That's a <laughs> big honor for me. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Because you know, I'm I'm one of the big people uh, that knows me very well is Pastor Jimmy Terry. You know, so yeah. I kind of like I always look at what, who's in their network. Who are they talking mm. to? Mm. As in mm. follow them. What can mm. I learn from this one? If I cannot mm. learn, I'll, I'll follow you. But mm. if I can learn, you know, I stay with mm. you mm. and all that. So, um, but PR. I like like I said, a lot of people are good. 
Oh, no, no. So this is the way I got into PR. Mm. I saw that there were a lot of people talking nonsense. Mm. As in, they, we, as in, I felt I was good. These people are not good. They are half baked mm. and they are the ones taking the airways. What are they doing that mm. I'm not doing? Doing, that's right. And I'm like, you know, and then I've, I'm not, I'm no longer a traditional Christian. Whereby, like, I, 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 started, I read a lot. I think, I think for myself. I engage with the Holy Spirit, and then you know, I solve problems. Like in the sense of like a lot of times when we pray, when you finish praying, if you believe that you receive what you've prayed about, as initially if, it, if it talks talks about an idea or something, then you pick, pick up a piece of paper and try to write the ideas that, as in mm. the solutions that come yeah. to your head. Yeah, it might be stupid, but it has helped me a lot. So mm. I, I I saw I saw that one of the major things was that they were always in the news. <laughs> Who is giving these people? Mm. Why are they always in the news? They always seek their opinion. They mm. always like mm. they always sh- shouting. So when uh, I said, you know what? One day I just tried. I just tried some level of PR, and then boom. And then with Instagram, everything going boom, 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 boom. boom you know, boom, boom. yeah. <laughs> and everything. And last year was was a fantastic year in the sense of like it was even last year that I really. Focused on yeah. a lot of PR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I focused on a lot of lot of PR. And when I focused on a lot of PR, last year was also the year that I got a lot of awards. Got in Nigeria, got in yeah. America, got in the UK. S- saw that, yeah, yeah. But it's because of PR. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. I think it's, it's because of PR. Yeah. It's simply because of PR. I'm not I'm not trying to sell PR, but it's just what it is. If Coca-Cola, a billion dollar organization, that is that you in Nigeria, you know, you sit on coke, you eat on coke, <laughs> as in like you do everything on coke. Yes, yes. As in you you see coke and pound and yam, you see yes. coke and rice. You yeah. and this is a multi-billion dollar corporation, and they are yeah. still doing PR, still yeah, right. doing advertisement. What are you? That is just yeah. that's out in your mother's bedroom that you cannot do PR. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. In fact, this guy so said this guy even said it, Jason Unjoko, the founder mm-hmm. of Iroko TV. Mm-hmm. What made them so their, their first set of investment from venture capitalists from America was because somebody they paid a publicist to write an article about them, a tech crunch. Uh-huh. The investor uh-huh. read the article, flew to Lagos and gave them money. <laughs> I, I mean, to think about it that some of these companies that are starting out, do you know they started in their garages? Yeah. Some in the basement. Yes. But when we in Nigeria are reading about them, we feel they are one big company. company mm. That why is because of PR. Mm. So you know, one of the things and which which I which I which I'm learning and I'm gonna be releasing some one of the things I've I've learned about those top three guys too, they are they are good, they are very good, mm. but they also allow you to know that see, I'm good. It's not like I'm on and they're, like, we're doing PR. When you now come, we are not good. No, we are good. Then number two, after what they write a book. Yeah, I'm an authority. Yeah, yeah. I'm like I'm an authority in the field. You know that that's also part of PR. Mm. 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 Because your book will go to where you cannot go yet. That's right. You know that, it so, has a multiply effect. Yeah, it has a yes. much effect and also give you that authority. And then somebody might pick it up and they also call you, oh, like your opinion, there's an election coming up. What's your opinion? Mm. What do you think about the security measure in Nigeria? I say security, okay. <laughs> As in like, mm. so, but, but, but some months from now, and then, uh, then finally, let me, I know I can continue, I can keep talking, um, is I also learned uh, from, from Abiola, and also Donald Trump. <laughs> it's Tell me about that's very interesting. Now Abiola in our uh yeah Moshura Abiola in Nigeria, yeah. right? Oh brilliant. Yes. And also, so when he was going for presidency, I think mm-hmm. there were a lot of bad press about him. My dad told me this, a lot of mm-hmm. bad press and everything. I think he was consigned. So he went to meet someone and said, Hey, there's a lot of bad. They just press and press as anything. So, but the person told him, say, there's no bad press. There's only press. Mm. And he said, they are writing about you every day, free of charge. Come on, come, man. Come on, man. It's as in, and he said something, as in, you no, know, them going, go, coming back to Donald Trump. The guy ran on PR. Yes, free, free press. 
He did not pay the dime. Every, it was always in the news. In fact, yeah. when he sees that he's, the, he's going down, he will just do come, something come, crazy again. He'll just come and say, drink bleach. <laughs> see, like, of course, I'm not saying that we should be as bad. I'm just saying that we should learn something. We should learn something. You know, learn from all this. Like, Pierre, of course, be, be good. Don't be fluffy. Don't be empty and yeah. be making noise. No. Yeah. Be solid, mm. as in be solid. Then market market yourself. Fantastic. I think our culture has taught us to have false humility. Mm. False humility, and somehow you know the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Everything that's right. It's and somehow thing. that way of us thinking has seeped into the way we do everything, even. Even like if you look at a white, uh, a, a white uh, Caucasian, let me mm. write it, Caucasian's uh, CV, mm. and you look at it as a Nigerian CV, mm. even though the Nigerian might even be better yeah. and well trained and yes. as incompetent than this person in terms of training and everything, you probably prefer this one. Mm. Why? Because they know how to market themselves. Mm. Because so your CV is your first step into the door. Mm. Nobody sees you and everything. So it's the same way with the newspaper. If people don't know you, then how do they locate you? So powerful, man. Powerful. Let me stop for now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to open the, the floor to entertain three questions from people in the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mutura, are you ready? But before that, I want to ask you one question um, here. I'm not even told you how I started in America. <laughs> no, no, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, you're, you're going to tell us because this question leads to that. Okay, no problem. Because I, I, I've noticed that you've quoted two things. What are you saying subconscious, but it's like they're so important to you. You once said that increase the quality and the quantity of problems you solve and automatically you will increase your results. Yeah. You repeated that same quote again in another publication where you said the level of your results, your wealth, and your impact you desire will be the result of the level of problems that you solve. Yeah. So solving problems see, is a key mental model for you. So the question I want to ask you is what problem does Block 22 solve and how did you see that problem and then you, you cashed in and got into the market? So that leads us to your, your come up story. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so one of the major problems that we solve is, of course, is um, housing. So, so, but me as, as a, like, I'm the CEO of Block 22, and how did I start? So maybe that will kind of... Yes, and um, also please add, the, add, add your triple R strategy, your RRR strategy. So that was brilliant. Your okay. RRR strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, our, as in, how I started. So I, when I, so when, as in, like I said, before I came into America, I, I had, like when I was in Futa, my books were actually in hundreds of thousands of Naira as a student. The books you were reading? That I had, yeah. My Your personal books? Yes. <laughs> not school books, though? No, not school books. Personal growth books? Yeah. Jesus Christ. As in, yes, the, 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 where I was making, the more we're making money, the more we're buying books. As in, in fact, my friend, Sukami, okay, yeah, Sukami, Sukami is in Abuja now. Uh, Kwekba is in Abuja too. Kwekba is the CEO of uh, SME Capital. He's in Abuja. And uh, Sukami is the CEO of one of the, like, we're, we're friends. We used to exchange books. We don't borrow, as in, you cannot borrow my books. Like, like it cannot happen. <laughs> as in, but you can bring a book and say, have you read this book? <laughs> then I said, have you read this book? Mm. Then we we'll exchange books. Because we started, when we started borrowing, our books started getting missing. And then we valued our book more than anything. So we now, you know, like, you know, no. And one of the books that I read as a then mm. was Cracking the Millionaire Code. Mm. And in that book, it talks about you have to choose a very good wealth. Mm. Mark Hansen. Yeah. So, mm. so I one of the the so I chose real estate as my vehicle to wealth. Mm. So, but when I came in here, one of the things I discovered is that the Nigeria and African community, especially the Nigerian community, mm. they are one of the 
I don't let me let me be nice. One of the some people feel because I came here, I suffer. You too, when you come, you must suffer. <laughs> so they give you information that they want you to have, not information that you need. Hmm. And a lot of people have they have half information, so they had their own to it. And somehow, somehow you don't get the real information that will have enable you to go with speed, mm. you know, like more than, and, and when you look at the other community, when you see the Jew community and everything, they, that's why they are moving and progressing faster. Yeah. Because when you're coming, oh, you're coming, this is the way, this is the to do, this is the way to do it. In fact, some people will give you a sort of soft loan and say, hey, you just, you will need this. Wow. You can pay and everything, you know, they develop that. So when I got here, I discovered that a lot of people don't even know what it entails to buy a house. Hmm. And they only knew the normal one, like the conventional loan, 20%. You want to buy us? Ah, you have to put down 20%. <laughs> you know, that hmm. kind of thing. But even from Nigeria, we didn't reach that poor dad, we didn't um, uh, some Donald Trump books. Hmm. Trump, we used to love Donald Trump as a businessman, not as a <laughs> Out of the deal. Out of the deal was Out a good one. Out of the deal. Yeah. As a, uh, I went to another book. I can't remember some of the book with uh, Robert Kiyosaki. You yeah. know, we, as a, I could literally learn the real estate game what, as, a, as a student in <laughs> Futa. And so I, I'm like, no, there is a way. There's mm. a way. And then when I came, when I got in here, um, I was a, an apprentice. I was literally an apprentice with, with someone for one year as my first one year in America. Very, I was just following somebody up and down. Like this guy very is just strategy. not serious. How can you come to America and be following somebody up and mm. down? But they didn't know. As in, so it was only a cash, it was a cash buyer and everything. And I, and I, but I know that they, they should, they should, because of the books and the knowledge I had, there should be other way. So I, I learned about the ways and I started educating. This is interesting. I was telling people in church, do you know you can buy a, a three or four unit building and uh, after, when you buy it, you're living free and then you can buy a range of sports. I was a range of sports crazy person. So mm. like, uh, what do you know? You just came. Mm. What do you know? You just came. What do you know? You just came. I was telling people, I was even giving people idea. Like, what do you know? You just came. And one, that's one of the pain. When you, when you look into another country, you literally start from zero. Nobody knows your capacity. Nobody your yes, capacity, yes, ability. Yes. Nobody knows your pedigree. Mm. So, as in, so when I was telling people, I just kept, I just, I just went back to my mantra, and this is one of my mantra: make your move in silence, let your Lamborghini make the noise. Hey, so, Jesus, bad boys move in silence. Say it again. <laughs> no, it's man, it's, this podcast has bombs, man. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> no, it's, it's make make your move in silence, let your Lamborghini make the noise. Come on, brother. <laughs> you know, and, and, it, and and I can it's scriptural. I can tell you the scripture for it. <laughs> You know, the scripture for it is, the Bible says, wisdom is justified by our children. Oh. Which is the result. Which is the <laughs> so, result, man. Yeah. Which is the result. You know, Wisdom you is there. justified by your children. Yeah. If you read other translations, you will see there. It's the result, the deeds, the, you know, and there are many talkers. There are too many talkers. So in, in order for you to separate yourself from the talkers, your results need to do the talking. Mm. Yeah, so because I was telling them, they're like, oh, you just came. You just came. You just came. People have been here 15 years. In fact, even some in high pain, you know, high network guys, job, high yeah. job and everything. So I kept quiet. And I got a, got a three unit building in less than two years of me being in America. Wow. So somebody, <laughs> when I mean less than two years, I did not even have. I, don't, I'm, I was not even yet a green card holder or mm. anything. Like, I was just still a regular guy. So somebody called my wife to encourage her. You know, like, ah, you know, you just married your husband. He's a young, like, giving time and everything. So what are you guys doing? She was like, we're moving to this, moving to another, like, it's still in Chicago, Chicago land, but mm. they, 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 they moved their office to downtown. She was, she was like, in an outskirt of uh, downtown, like suburb of downtown. Mm. Of, of Chicago, rather. So they moved the office to downtown Chicago. 
So like, oh, so you guys are going to be renting out. She was like, no, just got a building. And she didn't know how to describe it. Mm. So like, just got a, like a three bedroom, three bedroom, three bedroom. So the person was like, ah, that's, ah. Okay, you guys are renting. They're going to rent it. You know, <laughs> rent the three Say no. We I just got a three bedroom, three bedroom, three bedroom. <laughs> so I said, ah. the person I said, what are you into money? Yeah. <laughs> so she said, eh, hey, yes, meta. Like, he said, ah. I said, I will say to you, I said, bono. Yeah. I was, I was hearing, you know, because I said, bono. Ah. Bono, if I made it. <laughs> you know, you know, like, go take me, go take me two years. And we're like, yeah, uh, motor unit. As in three bedrooms, yeah. My wife was like, yes. Let me move, yeah. He said, I called you to encourage you, but I think yeah, I'm going to need encouragement. <laughs> Please, they offered me to call me. <laughs> My brother. Man, God is good, man. So Whoa. That's how, that's how, as in, so I, I called him and it, it, yeah, of course he has been, he has, uh, he has bought like two or three properties. So back to the, as in, so I saw, as in, you know, they put, I let, my, I literally let my reserves speak, you know, so I got a, got a three units. We were, as in, fixed it. Lived, we started living on one free of charge. When I'm free of charge, I'll tell them to repay the mortgage. Three months yeah. later, I got a, a wide range of our spot. My brother in church after service. Mm. I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'm yeah. not kidding. After service, there'll be queue of five, five seven. Like, one of very okay. <laughs> say, after I'm, I'm serious. For one year, I was. I talked. Oh my god, I was solving problem. I was like, no, you can do this. No, you can do that. You know, I was, why? Because they, my, they saw the result. And then yeah. I started debunking things, started teaching people. I was giving people value free of charge for almost one year. They were not really buying. But the next year, oh my God. Your sales like, exploding. Femi, I'm ready. Femi, I'm ready. Femi, I'm ready. You know, because you have to do some things, you know, literally to get ready. So mm. I was giving value. I was giving value. I was giving value. I was giving value. Every Sunday, someone will call you. As so, I was I solved a major problem that I saw mm. here, and then and then people started rewarding me because if you solve people's problem when they need, as in if you solve, I will give people value when they when eventually when they need to make that purchase or make that as in yeah. that as a sales or that product when they need it, it's you they will come to. That's right. That's right, man. Brother, this so, is, that's dope. That is literally, uh, uh, that's literally um, my, my, as in problem. So that blockchain is solving that problem for the community. And then after a while, we started, block, I started blockchain too, also because I wanted to create a, a, a an agent, some agents with investment mindset. Good. Because one of the things I say to myself is that I don't want to be a banker that has no bank. God, this guy is dope, man. Yo. <laughs> my brother, yeah. man. Yo, no, yo, yo, man. We'll have to do a part two of this thing. Nah, come on. Yeah. Man. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I don't want to be a banker that has no bank. Bank, you end up counting other people's money. As in seeing money, that's one of the low, highest level of frustration you ever see. That's why it keeps millions of money and everything. So I want to bring towards especially of African origin mm. that will become investors. Mm. That you will not just make people money or help people with their real estate solution, but also you'll be able to as make money from this industry because we yeah. make people a lot of money. Because sometimes we see deals and then we call a client and say, Oh, this is this, this deal, and they are happy. And then by the time they sell it or they don't sell it, like they start making cash flow or they sell it, even in Nigeria, they yeah. sell and then they walk away with millions. Mm. I know uh, people. Like someone was telling me recently, let's say Nigeria before when the developer starts, you can buy, and then by the time they finish, some people are ready to buy, and then yes. work with millions yes. Yes. and everything. But that's information, you know. Mm. So you know, um, so that's literally so that's the number one problem, as in the two major problems that that we are, as in that, that I saw and started literally solving. Wow, wow, this is so powerful. Femi, um, I'll ask one more question and then I open the 
things to, to the floor. I'm sorry, get ready for it. Yeah. Looking from your vantage position now, as a, as a person mm -hmm. in real estate in the US, we have a lot, a lot of real estate people listen to this podcast. I do a lot of sales coaching and training for the biggest real estate companies in Nigeria. Some realtors are going to listen to this now, watch this on YouTube now. If you were in their shoes right now in Nigeria, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. what would you tell them for them to make increase their sales, increase their positioning and all that? What would you say to that? Because most of them want to sell even to the US clients, the, the mm -hmm. clients in the diaspora. It's a big mm -hmm. market. Some of them are already doing it already. What would you tell them? If you were in those shoes, how would you make those sales? Okay. So number one thing I would say is this, is that the first place you tap into is your sphere of influence. Hmm. So it's your sphere of influence. And I, what I mean by that is, you know, <laughs> no, it's like the quick wins, you need some quick, especially if you're starting out. Yeah. You need some, you need some quick wins. And when I mean quick wins, it's your friend and family that knows, they know you. Yeah. So because let's let's look like you have to tap into what you already have because a lot of times you're trying to go after Dangote. Yeah, 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 <laughs> go after yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. these people and all that. No, you need to ask so first the first pot of gold that you have that you don't even know you have mm. is your phone. Bring, bring out your phone. Mm. Disturb your father. Who do you know? Mm. <laughs> Who do you know? You have no credibility. So write on your parents' credibility. Or other people's credibility. Or your other people. Like, well, uh, I said sphere of influence or just like that they can literally say, hey, thing. because real estate is one of the biggest purchases, like I said, people will make in their life. Yeah. And people don't make it, they don't buy the house with the company, they buy it with someone that they trust. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. That's so true. That's so true. If you want to buy a house today, you're not going to go... Even if you go online and look, as in, when you go online and look, it's because when you see a lot of review and you see, you know, you do research. Yes. But one of the first things you first ask yourself, who do I know in my sphere yeah. that is doing this? Right? Yes. That's, that's number one. Number two is, by the time you start, make sure you maintain top of the Mind. brand awareness mm. in the mind of the, your sphere of influence. Mm. Cook has done a fantastic job of that. Mm. As in, I don't, I keep going to cook because cook is a good example of yes. As in, yes. PR, marketing yes. and all that. Yes. Yes. So you, you want to maintain top of the brand awareness. My brother, if you go on Instagram, you see, you see me, real estate. If you yes. go on uh, WhatsApp status, real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. People were like, even then, I did not even have, uh, what do you call it now? Even if it's not my listing, as long as it's my office listing, I, mm. I, I was going there. Because I saw, you remember I said I studied the top three guys. Yes, yes, yes. They yes. were eating, sleeping, and breathing real estate. So, I, I because especially starting out, nobody know you. Mm -hmm. So you want to, as in, you don't want to be putting. Let me give you a good example. I saw that there were a lot of Nigerians that were realtors. Mm. I took call somebody. I was consigned. As in, when I mean, I was consigned, mm. and then a lot of them were ladies. And then when you, they, they follow you, by the time you look at their profile, you see them shaking, bum bum, shaking. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you see exposed. And they're like, so I'm like, are they selling real estate or selling their body? Mm. I was, I'm, as in, I, I still, just mid December, I caught somebody and I'm like, as in, because I'm, I'm thinking, so because the person was trying to convince me, like, come to Nigeria, maybe you should come and hold the training or something like for yeah. real talk and everything. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and then I, I started doing some study and I look, I say, real talk, this one real talk. And then the next thing, expo I'm like, ah, are they selling mm, this? Mm, 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 mm. As in, so it's not by selling your body. If you sell mm. your body, people will take advantage and they will go because they have the power, the yes. money. Yes. They they can sleep with you and, and uh, no, but it was more. I'm not, I'm not being racist or, or like a sexist or something, but it was so much. <laughs> mm, mm. As in real talk, I, like 100 I, pictures. I, I said, I looked at 100 accounts of mm. somebody saying that I'm a real talk or something. And 95 were all exposing their body. Mm. No, I'm not saying like, you know, I'm like, we're not just exposing, the, you know, I think they were selling sex. Yes. I'm like, 
you're not selling the solution. Wrong information. Hmm. Wrong information. So as in, I looked at it, I'm like, but me, as in, now, now I do a lot of motivation, a lot of speeches and everything. But then if you open my, <laughs> my, my page, you'll see me selling this real estate or selling that real estate, yeah. selling that real estate, selling that real estate. And then, and then number three is get yourself out there. Don't be a secret agent. Let everybody, hmm. as in, mm-hmm. if I mention about the brand awareness, if you don't know that you're a real estate agent, you're right. As in, just Facebook, let, let people say, ah, ah, Otito, no, Otito. <laughs> because if I mention, if I mention, uh, if I mention your name, if I mention Paul Four, mm. what comes, to, what's come to people's mind? Yes, sales man, sales coach, sales training man. <laughs> if you, if if I mention Dangothy, what comes to people's mind? Yes, man. If you mention, yeah. So if they mention your name, mm. it should be real estate. Yes, yes, and nothing else. And I mean, what, else. what you said is very powerful. What you said, but you said something that the top three people you're following, they mm-hmm. eat, they think real estate. Yes. I've, I've had this conversation with realtors in Nigeria before. Some of them will sell air, they will sell car, they will sell other things. I said, no, do one thing. It's called the power yeah. of It's called yeah. the power and, and I call it the print. Oh my God. My book. I'm already telling you some of this. <laughs> There's something called that, that I developed called the principle of the tree. Mm. A tree will develop strong roots first before branches. A lot of people start business, real estate, and then the next thing, I'm telling car, branches. <laughs> branches. <laughs> I'm saying, branches. Okay. Femi, that your book, eh? I'm saying it online now for everybody to yeah. Later, we'll talk about it. So I worked with a coach here in the UK. Her name is Tomra. She became an Amazon bestseller for 19 weeks. We worked with oh, the title. Okay. Work with everything because I've done seven books, so we work on that. Your book, oh, yes, sir. So, I've yes, enlisted sir. as your book coach because I know that <laughs> market like this, the like back of my hand. Now, <laughs> Mutrayo, ask your question. Oh, glory, uh, Mr. Ayumant. Yes, <laughs> yeah, good morning. Yes, Everybody. I'm sure you're pretty like mm. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Femi, like, funny enough, I, she's in America. <laughs> oh, yes, wow. I, yeah, she's I, in the she's in the real estate space as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I just typed on the chat that um this is actually meant for me. I'm sorry, I'm being selfish. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much, um, for, for, for this. I mean, um this uh this uh meeting has actually given me clarity on what I, I want to do. I just moved in here one week ago. Okay. Wow. Welcome. Um, thank you. I'm in Houston. I'm the lady carpenter. I, I'm into real estate in Nigeria and interior design. Oh, and okay. I came to America to also come into real estate space oh. as an investor. Not that I have that money. I've done little mm-hmm. research. But mm-hmm. from what you've said so far, I've been able to pick that I can actually start as a real estate agent also because i also want to start teaching people how to you know buy houses and all that so um i know you might not be able to answer all my question but i i, I don't know if you, i can have your number or something where i i um, ask you all the question number one on certification how okay. do I become a real estate agent? How do I also become a real estate investor? Okay. What do I need to do? I know about the FHA. I know about um, the uh, the 20% down payment. I know about the non-qualified mortgage loans and all that. But you that you are playing, you know, mention something about mentorship. I think I Femi has a class it. coming up. I saw you advertise something like some virtual yes, training coming up. Yes, I saw it on page, yes. Femi, yes, right? Yes, that's, yes. Yeah, that, that's a so for I, I saw it on page, yeah. So I, I want to be your, men, uh, your mentee <laughs> because I'm just coming into this space and you are okay. already playing in that space. So yeah. I, I really I really want to learn so much from you. Thank yeah, you. in terms of the certifications and yeah. all that. Brilliant. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. As in, one of the major things that I that I don't do, but but based on this platform and because of is is I hardly do mentorship. Not mm. as in I probably just mentored two people. <laughs> wow. As mm. in, but 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 I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make an exception because I'm very tough and hard. <laughs> on yeah. 
Again. As in, I'm a resort oriented pe- person. I'm a resort oriented person. As in, like, I'm, I'm, I'm this kind of person. Don't teach me about the Holy Ghost. When you, if you want to teach me, make as in, let me make a fall. <laughs> as in, like, I want to experience the Holy Ghost, not just teach about the Holy Ghost. Yes. Or you know, so yeah, that's fine. Based on this platform, I, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'll, um, I'll send you my number and and all okay. that. So. And one of the things I would say is that, like I said, welcome, welcome. Seek to be a value, uh, value, how you can add value, you know, yeah. how you can add value to the chain. And like I said, wherever you are, you need to first study what's the problem, what's the problem? There's mm. there are a lot of real estate agents. Yeah. Plenty. Because, and unfortunately, this, this is a bad time for you to come into real estate <laughs> with recession. Mm. And yeah. I interest you. Yeah. But, but it's also the best time to enter because now we have a lot of agents falling by the wayside when I mean one of these because they're not really agent now now because the market went very high and very good people were just so anybody could sell mm. but now they all as in fizzle out mm. so but but we're probably going to talk more about seek to be a value as in how you can have value mm. and and um one made your advice don't take advice from everybody. Mm. I know you're in Houston. I can see where you're in Houston, and there's a lot yeah. of a lot of Nigerians. Yeah. Like just... <laughs> don't, take, don't take as a don't take constructive criticism from someone that has not constructed anything. My God, this Ooh. guy, this guy. <laughs> Next question, please. Thank you. Next, anybody else? Have you got a question before we call this a wrap? This man is a very busy man. One more question, then we'll call this an interview a wrap. But I'll, I'll send how do I get okay. Mr. Paul has my number. I'll I'll, I'll okay. afford it to her, don't worry. I'll afford okay. it to her. Oh, yeah, can you ask your question Hello. in 30 seconds and then we'll call this an interview a wrap? Okay, it has been an amazing session so far. I mean, my notes is already almost filled. <laughs> ah, um, and I feel I've not even talked. <laughs> <laughs> so my field basically is event management. So I'm an event planner. I'm based in Abuja. Okay. So, but the question I have is concerning reading. I heard that a lot, you spent a lot of money, you know, getting books, spent a lot of time reading. I've had yeah. that um, challenge for some time. I've purchased so many of these books, but my challenge is always, you know, reading them to, you know, to the end. So I have, okay. I've read, you know, I have reached that point that I've bought a lot of them, but my mm-hmm. challenge has always been keeping tabs on, you know, the chapters, making sure I finish reading the books. So I don't know yeah. what um, method strategy. do you use, use? strategy exactly do you use okay. to make sure that you're able to finish reading such books, you know, at, at given time, see? All right, so that's one question. Okay. Can we get one more question so that we just tie it up together? VC, I wonder why you don't have a question for him. Yeah, venture capital, VC, KK, you don't have a question. Huh. Now, big man, be this, so not very good to see this guy. Oh. <laughs> so, hello, 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 coach. Yes. Yeah, uh, actually, it's been uh, amazing. And uh, my my notepads are really filled up. You know, <laughs> um, it's, it's a whole lot. And... Actually, I've been uh, my, part of my plan is to, you know, at some point this year, you know, move out of Nigeria, maybe to the UK. And what I have in mind, I'm not going, I told myself, I'm not going to do any other job. I want to just move and keep consulting and running my businesses in Nigeria. But I, I have interest in going into real estate in the UK. You know, so I don't know, uh, Dr. Femi, I don't know what you advise. Um, do you think I should, you know, start making moves already before I travel? What, what do you think should be my entry point? You know, are there barriers to entry that you anticipate I are might... Only, only... Okay. okay. So, can Femi, I, can you, I, can I, answer, I, you can answer the, the two questions now. Yeah? Okay. So, the first question about the lady, one of, one of the things I would say is that, as in, the first thing, as in every successful people, person I've done, and I'm sure um, Mr. Paul will agree, is, is to understand yourself. Mm, mm. To thyself be true. Yeah. As in, understand yourself. And when you understand yourself, and one of, you know, when you were talking, about, the only thing that came to my mind was, was this. Read for what you are going through. Mm, mm. As in, 
maybe you're trying to solve a sales problem. Yeah. Right? Your events business. You business. Start yeah. getting books on sales. That yeah. way, it's an interest is a problem. And yeah. you will, trust me, you will end, you read to the end. Yeah. 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 So you, you can be going through like like something and you just go and buy like for a starter so that you can build the habit. Yeah. And the yeah. interest will be there. Yeah. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. So that is that that that's one I think. And then number two is don't go and start with 300 pages book. Mm. It's really when you know that you're not finishing it. Yeah. Because if in life, if you keep Can you unmute your, yourself? Okay, sorry. Good. Yeah, okay. Good. yeah. So if you keep having a bad on project, when I mean a bad project, read this book, you do not finish, read this book, you do not finish, read it, it becomes a trend in life. So mm. what you want to do is, to, even if it's a 15 page book, read that book, finish it. Yeah. That joy, as in, like, oh, I finished this, you know, and then start reading. No, don't, don't go and buy 500, like, like you can see, look for <laughs> like I'm looking at your books. I like <laughs> look for one of the smallest ones so that you can and also something you are going through that you're trying to solve. Yeah. yeah. See, read for the moment, as in yeah. starting out. Eventually, you'll be able to read as in you know, develop the habit because that's the, the thing is that you you've not formed the habit. You need mm. to just first form that habit. And you can't form that habit by reading 500 pages book. Yeah. You will drop it as as number 10. You know, so that's that's uh, one thing I would say. And then number two is also if you can get uh, reading bodies or like that can hold you accountable. Like, oh, we're reading this book together. Yeah. You know, maybe your spouse, maybe your friend. We actually do that in the community. We review a book every month. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we well, review twenty three mutable laws of marketing. Last month we're doing Think and Grow Rich. This one the fifteenth. Yeah, yeah. You see. So, you so see. throughout this year we're going to do like twelve books. You see, and I feel everybody should have read that book. Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> in, you know, so that that's what, as in that's that will help, you know. And then you have a coach. Tell him to hold you accountable, even if you have to pay for it. <laughs> Are then, you seeing now this is your event management money? Bring some for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. Thank you. Okay, then back then to of course, you don't go into a strange land not prepared. Mm. Don't go into a strange land not prepared, you know. I, I have one of these jokes. I'm like, like God will not, you know, Jesus, why God will not send a baby into war? Mm. <laughs> As a, it's, a, it's a joke, but it's, there's truth to say. The reason why God will not send a baby into, into war is because his diaper will fall down. <laughs> mm. You know, so, which will cause a distraction to the baby. And, you know, so you don't go into the UK. If you're in Nigeria, start studying about the UK. What's about the property market? I can, I can, I have someone, Dr. Danny, you, you bring I, I've interviewed him with Dr. Danny Mosier. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good person to. Yes, you can sign up with Dr. Danny if you want to get into the real estate uh, so I can, I can do that introduction. Him. Go, yeah. look, go on his, uh, what do you call it? On his uh, courses. He, he does courses on all the stuff. He has a lot of videos or something. Just go and read everything. In, everything. First. First. Go Watch on, all his YouTube on, channel, all, all his YouTube videos. Yeah, YouTube videos and go like, be so much like because when you there are, there are terms or terminologies you know that you start learning yeah that you know you want to start speaking the lingua or yeah, not just right. about speaking the lingua but understanding what the lingua means yeah you know before you even um get there such that you save yourself uh time so, you know you're redeeming time yeah you know okay. you're redeeming time so by the time you get there yeah and then I think that's uh, that's about the best advice. And then look for uh, people that are there and look for their books. Fantastic, fantastic. Dr. Femi, this has been a fascinating conversation. Uh, yeah. So let me do some speed rounds of questions as I okay. as I as I as I as we as, as we wrap. So last year was a good year for you. Was was the one podcast or the one YouTube video, or the one book that you thought was really really significant for you? That's a hard question. <laughs> because books like Head with Plenty. I know you read a lot, yeah. Uh, that's or a tough one. Let me let me make it like three for you if you can come up with three. Three good books, okay. podcasts that you really, really made an impact for you last year. 
Okay, so I think it's as as interesting as this may sound, but it's as I think it's uh, more of Apostle Sermon. Mm. Apostle Sermon in terms yes. of what I mean, I I'm a Christian, so I don't know if everybody's a Christian, but mm. it's this is me. So mm. um Joshua Selma. Just uh, Pastor Joshua Selman, because it's not just about the uh it's it's someone that the ideas, the principles behind it all, as in you know, yes. the way they're very like, deep, they're very you know, deep. They're very deep and everything. And then, and again for me, it, I had a lot of going out, going out somewhere, you know. So it, for me, it's the also the way it communicates is is truth. Mm. You know, so Powerful. you know, Powerful. so honestly, as a <laughs> that's for, that's number one. But you, but do you know that Femi, it, it really ties up to some of the things that we've been talking about. You see how his team or the world use the internet to leverage his message. Dr. Yeah. Selma is on everybody's phone. Yep. So we're and talking about publicity uh, here. We're talking about mm -hmm. publicity here in a good way. Think about it. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the leverage of the internet, that even though he's sleeping, his words are all over the place, you won't be yep. talking about him right now. Sure. So True. this is so powerful. Short form content, large form content, use the power of the internet. Yeah. So, sir, yeah. I, was, I was joking with some people. I said, you know, you listen to Jerry Easy, what God cannot do does not exist. The man shows up every single day doing that thing, every morning. But you, you show up once in a while on the internet. Mm. Are you seeing, are you seeing mm -hmm. the Are you seeing yeah. the thing? Yeah, yeah. Study and, the and, guy, and, study him. Yeah, and now let me just say this here. Let me drop this. This one of the one of the major things, or one of the things that happened to my to me, and also one of the things that changed my Instagram game. So, you know, I do content. I so I, I'm always producing content. As in, some will go well. Some as in before now because it was actually in June that things changed yeah. drastically and i'll tell you how, what happened so i think everybody will learn from this about being consistent especially whatever you do even if it's a conference you are creating yeah. i was always creating content you know i like i like motivating people i like i like um and also real estate so i was i was producing 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 like for years i've been on instagram for years and then i love cars so and then one day and i'm so i live the life of content because i'm busy so sometimes yeah. if my sons are displaying I just quickly <laughs> bring up my phone mm. because I actually tell out my messaging because I want to uh, seen as a real estate, real estate that is real estate guy, successful person, but highly family, family oriented. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. if you if you go on my Instagram, you, you already see that. Yeah, it's, I love your last channel. picture with you and your son when you say who's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's in, it's intentional. So so my son, very funny guy. I I said he would display something, so I, I I put it online. As I just put him online, it was trying to make make a choice. So I know I don't want this. I want this. This this car should take me to. I don't know if you saw the video. As in, so I put it on 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 Instagram, Instagram and it, as in, that's a lot of view. Then one day I woke up, I picked up my phone. As in, I my wife sent me a message. Please help me transfer the clothes on the dryer yeah. from the washer to the dryer like if you wake up earlier than me yeah so i came downstairs because i wake up early so i, I, came down, I put my phone on the dryer and i was moving the the clothes and i saw my phone going it's like you know like followers yeah i was like ah, what's happening meanwhile before i slept i was i was waiting for my followers to eat thirty thousand followers so yes as in, i was like ah, somebody should follow you know like, before i slept so I, I saw my phone going, ah, what's happening? So I went to my Instagram, checked my phone, and I saw 34,000 followers. I'm like, ah. Wow. 34,000 followers. As in, like, <laughs> I was waiting for two yes. people to follow me before I slept. That I was like, ah, what happened? So when I was saying, what happened? As I saw somebody sent me a message, one of my friends said, are ah, you blown out? Tune not carry your video. Oh. What? But that's not even the point. Between that time that my like that time my son went viral, and now right now I have I'm getting close you're to seventy. You're seventy three thousand plus followers now. Now uh, you know. But I like like I said, if something happened, I always told you what happened. So, mm. and then I was talking with someone very highly influential person too, and we we're talking. I said ah, that my son went viral and everything. And person said something. He said, "Your son went viral." 
the traffic came, mm. content made them stay. Mm. Hmm. Because I've gone to check a lot of people that you know not as in I just started have to blow, but yes. their followers in, dropped. You're right. Yeah. Either their followers right. dropped or they didn't really move. They didn't move. You're right. You're right. In fact, in fact, in the video, I remember in the video I wrote, I don't blow. In two days, said, no, you know, just to make fun. Yeah. And somebody yeah. responded and said, it's not now that you blow. You know, content, because I was consistent. So your prior content kept them there. Kept them there. So when oh. they came, like, oh, this person, oh. who is this person? 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 You know that kind of thing? I'm serious, because videos that I've had, that I had maybe 5,000, every they just started going to 50K, 100K, and everything. And people were like, oh, where have you been? You know that kind of thing, where have you been? And everything. So consistency, whether it pays, as long as you know you're doing the right thing, I'm sure even in sales, make the call. Make, as in go out, follow up. It's a gold mine. Don't you're stop. Mm. As in, it's, one day it could be. It will happen, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I you, you know, eh, Femi, they say all, all truth. Truth is very powerful. You know, one of the 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 partner of Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, just turned ninety nine. One of my favorite mental models is guy said, "Do not disrupt anything that is compounding unnecessarily." Mm. Mm. I think I, I, I heard you say, as in, I, yes. I, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so can you imagine if you were not getting full as you stopped? But you didn't disrupt it. Mm -mm. You didn't disrupt it. And when it's compounded, when the clouds are full of water, they will mm. empty themselves as rain. This yeah. is a good place yeah. to end this podcast. <laughs> this is a master class. Somebody shout and say, This is a master class. <laughs> I, I, I'm interested in I've never even, I've never even told you. How I started with, with one. I came into this country mm. first of December two thousand and fifteen. Mm. I was in OA with literally two hundred dollars in my pocket. Only how much? Two hundred dollars. Into the America. Yeah. Jesus Christ. As two thousand first, I'm I'm seven years like seven years in America in uh, first of December two, last year. As in, I came in first of December two thousand and fifteen. Wow. Wow. Tell me, yeah. we're going to do a part two of this. So that's what I thought. As a dad, I said, I've not even... No, you have not started. I've not even thought, but but really, I enjoyed it. It was so fun. I, I was like, I was... Tell me, I, there's one more question I want to ask too. Yeah. If you're going to recommend this podcast to someone and say, Paul, you need to interview this person. I will make an introduction for you. Who would that person be? Who is the entrepreneur that you would be? And say, Paul, you need to talk to this, my friend. This is my guy. I think you guys will gel. I will make the introduction. Who would that be? Um, it should be well. I mentioned, I know I mentioned uh, my my um, CS, uh, the CEO of SME Capital. Fantastic, fantastic. He's my he's my covenant, uh, covenant brother, like, yes, covenant brother, not just covenant brother, he's also he's both an entrepreneur and entrepreneur. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> like, yeah, like uh used to be with Oracle, but we've always been business guys from from I think from I know him. He used to be in Lagos. Yeah, I've seen him I, with a picture I, with I, you I, before. Yeah, he has attended yeah. one of my classes. Oh yeah, I'm sure he yeah, has. Yeah, yeah. Always, always everywhere. Anywhere yeah, we, yeah. Anywhere we see, I remember when we were in school. When we were in school, this this is funny. Let me just on a lighter note. When in yeah. school, I, we used to <laughs> stop lectures. In fact. So when I pray, right, there's this, uh, there's Bishop Felix Adichon, mm -hmm. uh, and he used, used to bring mighty men, as I mean, big men of God. Yes. So anytime there's a, like one, the one time like that was Bishop Oedeko around, I'm like, ah, well, like, it would be a disrespect for us to go to class. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy, man. I love this guy. <laughs> as it's my as guy. Go, we're, we're, always my God. Like, we're always not like, oh see, my like, God, like, Femi. Like, I, I feel a kindred spirit with you. You know why? Because the way you were in school, it's exactly the way I was in school. The yeah. way you were in school is exactly the way. We were talking about the books. I was just laughing. Femi, I had a big shelf full of, I gave it to my pastor in Lagos. 
I've, I've started buying new sets, sets, sets of books. I couldn't fly with them. So I, 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 when I, was, when I, was coming, I could not fly with my books. I, I said, couldn't fly I with them. To my dad. I said, Dad. I, I just gave to my pastor. I gave him everything. I gave him everything. So I, I, I think there's a kindred. I know we're going to do other things together. It's very clear. It's, this is sure. This is divine. Thank you, my brother. I really appreciate you. I honor you. I respect you. I love you. Well done. Keep winning. Keep smashing bigger goals and keep Thank making you, the sir. kingdom of God proud and making us proud um, here. We'll talk later on all, on, okay, on, yes, on, all, on other things. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, yeah. Um, and I'll, like I say, I'll see you at the top. Yes. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Thank sir. you. All right, so community members, let me see. Talk to you for while Femi goes to do his, his business. I want to just chat with my with my guys okay. here and just ask them how how it went. Hello, everybody. What's up, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you love your coach? <laughs>